In this video, I'll introduce you to the Gecko Turbulence Model. I will cover what is the Gecko Model and why was it developed? How is the Gecko Model different from other RANS models? What are the Gecko Model free parameters? And how do I tune these parameters? So what is the Gecko Model? The Gecko Model's name is shortened from Generalized K-Omega. Therefore, it is a K-Omega based model with the goal of consolidating two equation RANS models into one flexible, robust, general-purpose turbulence model. Compared to other turbulence models, the Gecko model makes it easier to adjust the model constants so that the predictions match specific flow conditions. The Gecko model is therefore of most interest to modelers who regularly perform such model calibrations. Why was it developed? Within the RANS concept, it is not possible to cover all flows with sufficient accuracy using a single model. So Fluent offers multiple turbulence models, allowing users to select the best model for their application. However, this is not an optimal strategy, as not all models are of the same quality in terms of robustness, interoperability with other models, near wall treatment, and so on. This means that changing from one model to another has additional consequences beyond the desired change in solution. The Gecko model, which is accessed from the K-Omega model submenu, attempts to solve this problem by providing a single high-quality model with enough flexibility to cover a wide range of applications. How is the Gecko model different from other RANS models? The Gecko model differs from traditional two-equation RANS models in that it provides free parameters that you can adjust for specific types of applications without negative impact on the basic calibration of the model. In the classical RANS models, the model coefficients are provided in the GUI. However, most should not be changed as this would cause the model to lose calibration with the most basic flow, such as flow over a flat plate. What are the Gecko model free parameters? Within the Gecko model exists four free parameters. They are CSEP for separation. This parameter controls flow separation from smooth surfaces. Increasing CSEP leads to earlier and stronger separation. C and W for near wall. This parameter optimizes flow in non-equilibrium near wall regions. Increasing C and W leads to higher heat transfer rates at stagnation and reattachment locations. C mix for mixing. This parameter optimizes the strength of mixing in free shear flows. It is computed automatically based on CSEP by default, but can be set manually as well. Increasing C mix leads to stronger mixing in free shear flows. C jet for jets. This parameter optimizes free jets independent of the mixing layer, since increasing C mix will also increase the spreading rates of free jet flows which can be undesirable. C jet enables you to decrease the effect of C mix on free jet flows. C jet is only required in a limited number of applications and is only active when C mix is non-zero. There are two specific combinations of interest. The default values of C sep equal to 1.75. C and W equal to 0 0.5, C mix equal to 0 0.3, and C jet equal to 0 0.9 give a close approximation of the SSD model in terms of flow separation behavior. With C sep equal to 1, C and W equal to 1, C mix equal to 0, which negates the impact of C jet, the model obtains an exact transformation to the standard K epsilon model with the improved near wall treatment of the K omega model. There's also a blending function which controls the relation involving C mix and C jet that deactivates these parameters inside boundary layers. Note that C sep, C and W, C mix, and the blending function can all be specified via UDF. There are additional parameters that allow further fine tuning of the model behavior. See the ANSYS documentation for more information regarding these. There are also the model constants, which, as discussed earlier, generally should not be changed. In the majority of cases, only tuning the parameters under Gecko options will suffice. This concludes part one of this introduction to the Gecko model. In part two, I'll discuss best practices for tuning the Gecko model free parameters.